So just for a few minutes on this Sunday night, I want to draw your attention back to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And I want to speak to you for just a few minutes. This morning we concluded uh, a couple of points from John chapter 17. We talked about the person of prayer. Jesus spoke these words. He prayed over his disciples. And I reminded you this morning that it is so important to seal what you're trying to accomplish in the lives of your family. If you're a teacher, it's so important for you to seal the work God has given you to do with prayer. Everybody say, seal it up. Seal it up. Seal it up. The, the, prayer, uh, the prayer is what accomplishes things after we have done what we can do. After we have made a stand, then we pour on the prayer and God will do what we cannot do. So this morning I talked about the person of prayer, that was Jesus, the periods of prayer. And uh, then I talked about the time of prayer that this verse of scripture is taken from, John chapter 17. What time was it? It was right before the betrayal, right before the crucifixion. And Jesus is praying in the upper room his upper room discourse, and I hope that you've had time to explore that from John chapter 13 through 17. Jesus concludes the upper room discourse with prayer. And this, this prayer is so powerful that uh, I want to concentrate on it a little bit on this evening service so that you leave here maybe with a new desire and a new motivation to pray like never before. So I want to conclude with the purpose of this prayer. The purpose of this prayer. In John chapter 17 and verse 1. John chapter 17 and verse 1. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Honor, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that you also may, he also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that you may know him, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Verse four, I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had was with you before the world was. And then uh, we'll begin reading uh, uh, verse 17. Verse 17 of chapter 17 of John. Sanctify them. He is praying for the believers. He's praying for his disciples. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they might also be sanctified by truth. I do not pray for these alone, but for those who will believe in me and through your word. That would be you and me tonight. Jesus' prayer transcended the moment. And he said, I pray not only for these, but for those who will believe those to come they will believe in me through your word and then verse 21 that they all may be one as you father are in me and i in you that they may also be one in us now watch the result of this that the world may what that the world may believe here is an exciting key to evangelism how many of you would love to see this church filled for the glory of God? How many of you would like to lead someone to Jesus Christ and, and redeem a soul before you check out? You'd like to have some souls to lay at the feet of Jesus. Here, we, here Jesus is praying and he's desperately trying through this prayer to reveal to us the way. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
the way for us to be productive and successful in bringing people to Christ. And that's why we're here tonight. We're not here for any other reason but to glorify Jesus with many souls coming into the kingdom of God. And Jesus is praying here, and he says, and the glory which you gave me, verse 22, that I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may what? Here he's praying again. He said that the world may know, the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. So I want to concentrate on the purpose of this prayer on this Sunday night, and I'm just praying that God will make this crystal clear to all of us here tonight, that we can leave here. If you will notice in the first four verses of John chapter 17, the word glory is used five times, glory. And what Jesus is praying for is the glorification, now listen to me, the glorification of the believer. I want you to see this. He's my Savior and I love him for that. How many of you are saved tonight? Isn't it wonderful? But there is another work that God desires to do in and through us. And that is that we would be glorified that the Father would be glorified in and through our lives. And this is why Jesus is praying. This is why he's spending this time. He's trying to drive a point home. And he's trying to say, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And you're gonna be the glorification of God's perfect will in the earth. And so, here are two things that the Lord wants to accomplish in all of our lives. This is the purpose of the prayer. He said, Lord, that we might do what you have called us to do. Everybody say to do what the Lord's called us to do. That's the first point. The second point is that we might finish. Everybody say that we might finish. I don't know about you, but I'm not in this thing for the short term. I have a determination in my heart to cross the finish line. I want to see heaven my home. I want to see the glorification. We're headed for a day when we're going to have a new body, when the saints on the other side are glorified forever and forever to be with the Lord. I intend to cross the finish line. I intend to put my feet on streets of gold. I intend to see walls of jasper and gates of pearl. I intend to inherit. Glory to God, glory to God. And this is why Jesus is praying this way. He is praying that we would do the will of God that we would have the power to do the will of God and then to finish the race that is set before us. You know, you can, you can overcome a bad start, but you'll never overcome a bad finish. The finish is what's so important. I, I didn't just start on this journey just to, just to get a blessing and just to be, uh, 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 just to be a uh, receiver of what God has given me in this life. No, sir, I, I'm a receiver, but I'm going to finish. I got my eye on the goal line. I'm going to accomplish what God has, his will for my life. And this is what Jesus is praying for, that we would know God's will, that we would accomplish it, and that we would finish, not in a whimper, not barely, not just by the skin of my teeth. I want to cross the finish line in a blaze of glory and power. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One day we're going to, one day we're going to. And so John 17 and verse 17 is the key verse, and I want you to look there because tonight we're talking about impartation and the impartation of Jesus into our lives. What did he say in John 17, verse 17? He said, Lord, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them. He said, and for thy sakes, verse 19, if you'll look there, let's, re let's read verses uh, 18 and 19. And as you sent me into the world, I have also sent them into the world. 
and for their sakes, for whose sakes? For our sake. He said, I sanctify myself that they may be also sanctified by the truth. I don't know about you, but I'm glad Jesus sanctified himself. And then in verse 20, he says, I do not pray for these alone, but for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may be also one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. This is a powerful, powerful truth. And, and tonight I want the Holy Spirit just to quicken this to our heart. What, how, how in this world can we do his will and how in this world can we finish what God has in store for us? Jesus gave us the key when he said, sanctify them as I have sanctified myself. Now, what does the word sanctify mean? Sanctification, and listen to this carefully, means to be set aside for an intelligent purpose. And when you're set aside to be set apart for an intelligent purpose, this was exactly what the Father did with the Son, Jesus. He set aside himself for the purpose that God called him for. Please stay with me tonight. I don't want this to sound like double talk to you. I want you to get this tonight because I believe it's going to put meat on your bones and give you strength for the days to come. He said, I set myself apart. I present myself to you, Father, that your will might be done in me. And verse 10 of Hebrew, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7, G, the, the scripture says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written to me to do thy will, O God. That is why Jesus came, was to do the will of God. That's what Jesus set himself apart for. He said, it is written of me in the Bible. The whole Old Testament is Jesus revealed in shadows and pictures. In the New Testament, Jesus fulfills all of the promises from the Old Testament. So what Jesus is saying here, he said, I finished the work you gave me to do. All that was written in the book. What was written in the book about Jesus hundreds of years before he was ever born? Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5 says, he's wounded for our transgressions. He's bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. And Jesus said, I came to fulfill that promise that you made. I've dedicated myself. I've sanctified myself to fulfill the, I don't know about you, but I'm more happy that Jesus didn't fail. I'm so happy Jesus went all the way. I'm so happy Jesus set his heart and set his mind. And he said, I'm going to finish what God gave me to do. And tonight we have victory and glory because of what Jesus has done. Come on, let's praise him together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then Jesus prays more. He said, I want you to sanctify them the same way you sanctified me. In John chapter 17 and verse 18, it, it just underscore, it says, as, as thou hast sent me, in verse 18, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world in the same way. The principle that Jesus operated by is the principle that you and I are to operate by exactly the same way. Look at verse 19 again in John chapter 17, verse 19. And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through thy truth. What Jesus is saying, just as I set myself apart for the intelligent purpose of God, my people are to be set apart by the truth of God's word for the intelligent purposes of God. I happened onto a book not long ago entitled The Saving Life of Jesus Christ. And boy, what a book it was. And in the book, it asked these questions. And so on this Sunday night, these are a little sobering questions, but let me just, let me just uh, challenge your mind and your heart for just a minute. 
Which of these things in the life of Jesus is more spiritual? What would you say that Jesus was doing was most spiritual? Was he most spiritual when he preached on the mount? Was he most spiritual when he raised Lazarus from the dead? Was he most spiritual when he washed the disciples' feet? When would you say he was most spiritual? Would you say when he was preaching and shouting and teaching? Or when he raised Lazarus from the dead? Or Jesus also washed and told people to go wash? Was he most spiritual when he told people to go wash? Or was he more spiritual when he spit on the ground and made mud and anointed a blind man's eyes? Which was more spiritual? I want to uh, point out an important, a pivotal topic, and I pray that you will hear me tonight. The most important spiritual work Jesus did, of all the things you could think of, never was he more spiritual than when he was on his knees presenting himself to his father. Everything else was secondary. That was the place where he was determined. That's where he determined God's will. That's where you and I will determine God's will for our lives. That is the best spiritual work you can do in this life. All of these other things are secondary because God's will is fundamental in everything. Praise the Lord. Can the tool say to the carpenter, I don't desire to do a work. Does the tool have a mind of its own? The tool is useless unless it is in the hand of a master carpenter. We too, when we commit ourselves to the Lord in prayer, we're yielding our lives to the master potter. We're yielding our lives to him. We become clay in the hands of the potter that the Lord might work something in our lives that will shake a generation for the glory of God. We'll turn a church upside down that will reach a community with the message of the gospel and the power of God that can set people free. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, we're committed. We're the tool in the hand of the Lord. And here is, a, here is another truth, and I, and I don't want to be foggy, and I don't want to be ambiguous, but I, I want to make a point tonight. You see, so many of us are task-oriented. I tell you, you know, sometimes in a missionary service, a missionary will come with slides, and maybe it's a slide of hungry children, slides of, you've seen them, haven't you? On Feed the Children, on television, they show the needs around the world, babies starving to death and all of the terrible tragedies that are taking place around the world and we give to those causes and we're thankful to God that we can give to those causes. But listen, listen. Our lives are not to be task oriented. You know, uh, so many times in generations gone by, please hear me tonight, they'll say find a need and fill it. Find a need and fill it. And that's, that's okay. Except that's not God's way. I'm going to say it again. That's okay, but that's not God's way. Because there are needs all around us. There are needs in third world countries tonight that I can tell you about places I've been that would break your heart. And sometimes we get to look in at the missionary slides and we get to, our hearts get emotionally caught up in it and all of a sudden we say, well, we'll go there. We'll go there. But that is, uh, that is task-oriented evangelism. And we're not committed to a task. You don't surrender to a place. You don't surrender to a person. It's the tool that surrenders itself to the hand of the master. The tool surrenders to the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just trying to make a point here, and that is our important task, 
Our spiritual responsibility is to present ourselves to God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then from that relationship, and this is what Jesus is trying to emphasize here, from that relationship, then he begins to guide and direct and he begins to lead you. He begins to guide and direct and to lead you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I think a lot of people who surrender to a task are like Moses did. Moses surrendered to a task. He's going to lead the people out of Egypt's bondage. He started out as a missionary and ended up a murderer. He couldn't understand it. He said, I thought I knew my right hand was going to lead them out. But he surrendered to a task instead of to the Lord and God's will for his life. So many of us are surrendered to a task. Oh, my goodness. I could just go on and on here about this. <laughs> Sometimes we, we, we think we need to have, uh, 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 especially young people, they're, they're looking for that person for their life. They're looking for that mate for their life. And they almost surrender to finding that person. But they don't do it by committing it to the Lord. And only the Lord can work it out. Only the Lord can bring the answers. Only the Lord can stir. Only the Lord can bring what we actually need in our lives. Only the Lord can do it. And so I tell people in our church, don't surrender to this church. Don't surrender to me. Heaven help us. Don't surrender to me. Surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the one who knows how to turn everything around in your life and turn it for his glory and for your benefit and your welfare. Surrender to Jesus. Surrender to do his will. Oh, commit your life into his hand like never before. Oh, what is God's will? What is God's will for your life? I can't tell you how many times people ask me, what is God's will for my life? And I always just say this, God's will for your life is Jesus. It's Jesus surrendering to him. As Jesus did in the garden here, he's praying for us that we would sanctify ourselves to be. You know, uh, the, the Bible says that he, he ordained those disciples, first of all, to be with him. Before he ever sent them out, he ordained that they would be with him. And we have to find our marching orders. The will of God is Jesus Christ. The will of God is not a task. The will of God is not committing to a certain need. The will of God is committing your life to Jesus Christ. And I promise you, if you commit your life to him, you're going to do the will of God. And I promise you, if you commit your life to him and you present yourself as a living sacrifice, one day you're going to cross the line. Heaven's going to be your home. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I do what I do because I'm committed to him. Let me just say this quickly about church and church work. If you commit to a task in a church, when the task gets tough, you'll fade fast. But you know, I'm not here tonight because I'm task oriented. I'm not here because I don't have someplace else to be. I'm here because the Lord sent me here. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, I am in the will of the Lord for my life. I know, I know, I know. I know that three and a half years ago, the Lord opened a door for us to go to Florida. And I've never doubted it for one day that God's mighty sovereign hand wasn't in us going there. And because the Lord sent us. And I'm not through until the Lord's through with me. Amen. It's not the church. It's not the ministry. It's not the assemblies of God. And I love all the things that are going on around the world in the assemblies of God. But I'm not committed to the assemblies of God. But I am committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And ladies and gentlemen, he'll carry you through. When all of the others have failed, he will carry you through. We're doing this. Glory to God. Let her run. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to praise the Lord in this house tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, let's take a praise break. Come on, just praise him right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, tonight. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so tonight, on this Sunday evening, I want us to present ourselves to God. I want us to again sanctify ourselves for a distinct purpose and reason. And again, we need to come and again, the Bible says to renew our commitment. The Bible says that, that as we follow the Lord, that there will be times when we need to get back to where we started, back to the cross, back to the foot, back to the victory, back to the where, where Jesus purchased our salvation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so tonight, I, I want us to cross over one more time. Hallelujah. In Joshua chapter 3, he said, Sanctify yourselves, for the Lord will do wonders among you tomorrow. Sanctify yourself in his presence. And tonight, uh, I believe with all of my heart that there will be an impartation, that the will of God will be revealed. Oh, yes, the will of God will be revealed in your life. The purpose of God will be, and you will have the power to do and the power to finish. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. We're not just a bunch of people who started. We intend to finish this race. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to commit myself in a brand new way. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to take this carpet down here as a symbol of sanctification. When God brought the children of Israel into the promised land, they had to cross the river. And when they crossed the river, God was sanctifying them for a new day. And they would take the promised land. And the promises of God would come to pass because they crossed the river. Oh, hallelujah. And what did Joshua tell the people? He said, when you see the priest and the ark put their feet in the water, then I want you to take off and go after them. And I want you to cross over. And so tonight, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to cross over. This is going to be the symbol of our Jordan. This is going to be the place of sanctification right here. We're going to commit ourselves one more time. Tonight, I want to impart. Tonight, I want to commission again. I want to see God do a miracle in your life and bring you into everything he has promised you for. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Raleigh, this is really ringing up here. Is there one mic or another I can turn down a little bit? All right. I want everybody tonight that would like to, like to sanctify yourself again. Just like Jesus said, Father, sanctify them. And you realize when you come tonight that this is God's perfect will for your life. That this is the place where he reveals, what will the future be? What will the future hold? This is the place as we sanctify ourselves in his presence. So if you'd like to come tonight, I'm inviting everybody that will to come. I'm going to pray with each one of you. And we're going to cross over into a new promise in the name of Jesus. This is going to be a brand new day. Lord, we need a brand new touch. Lord, today we need your strength like never before. And Lord, we recognize Jesus sanctified himself. Just come right over here and just form a line here and over here. And we're going to, one, at one time, we're going to pass over in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Now, when we're coming tonight, you're presenting yourself to God. Not to me, not to the church, not to the task. I want you to present yourself.